Hi, uh, morning everyone. Uh, my name's Sam Richardson, as it says up there. I'm an investment director at uh, eSynergy on the Sustainable Technology Fund. Um, now, I can't claim to have any sort of high moral purpose other than to try and make money from investing in sustainable technology companies. So I'm going to try and give you a bit of background on uh, what we do, um, how VCs um, operate, and try and give you a bit of understanding on what our perspective is uh, on sustainable technology and perhaps give you a few pointers as to how you might uh, get greater success in, uh, in trying to raise funds from us. So I'll just rattle, rattle on. Um, so what is a Sustainable Technology Fund? The Sustainable Technology Fund is a £30 million fund. It's only focused on UK companies. Um, UK companies that are looking for anything between half a million and £3 million <coughs> worth of investment. Um, sustainable technology, as we define it, is a pretty broad church. Um, anything that reduces natural resource usage, improves energy efficiencies and reduces waste. Um, now we've been investing in this fund since 2007. Uh, we've made eight investments to date and I guess that makes us probably one of the most active investors in the sustainable technology sector in the UK. Um, in fact, I'd say we, we, we see on average about 200 investment propositions a year in this, in this space. Um, so what is it that actual you know, VCs do uh, with all these investment uh, propositions they see? Um, I think one of the key things to remember when you look at this slide is that um, even the, you know, the, the VCs that are most hopeless at deal origination um, see far more deals um, than they've got the time to actually actively look at in a lot of detail. So these are the kind of the key elements that we've got to see in, um, in an executive summary or a two-page teaser document that you're sending to us. Um, you know, it's got to have a growth business model, the market potential has to be there, there needs to be um, at least uh, the basis of a strong management team. And I think the, the, one of the other key things to remember is that you should never assume that the VC that you're approaching um, you know, has got endless amounts of time to review large, bulky information documentation. So really get it very, very concise, very punchy, get the key messages you want. Um, read out um, and, and, and focused to the, so that the VC can pick it up very, very quickly. Um, moving on to the next, uh, next slide, I'm, there's a couple of observations that you know, we can make from being investors in this sector for the last 18 months. I think we really see it as an emerging market, um, much like any other emerging market. Um, I mean, there's a number of different uh, dynamics that are driving this, uh, this sector, but some of them are generic to any sort of small emerging technology sector. Um, <coughs> You know the things that we're seeing is that there's still a you know a lack of quality management teams that can that are being spread quite thin amongst uh, a number of early stage businesses. Um, there's still a shortage of venture capital funding. I think that's still going to remain, um, and you know we're still we're still seeing many companies struggling with getting um, initial customer sales, even if they've got uh, what appears to be a very compelling technology or service proposition. Um, the the mid-sized uh, potential customers are still um, reluctant to take on uh, technology and services from, from small companies. So driving that commercialization again is a very, very key issue for the companies that we see. Um, and also, in, particularly in the sort of environmental and sustainable sector, the audit and compliance requirements for these products, whether it's you know, DEFRA or the Environment Agency, can be huge hurdles. In fact, they can be the biggest hurdle to actually getting um, successful early sales. So do not, you know, that's a key thing not to underestimate. Um, just follows on to the next slide here. The other thing to, to, to understand is not just to think of it as where am I, but you must always think where am I going and if I'm looking for finance, where are my investors going to get a return? Um, so the exit challenges I think, which I've just summarised here on, on, on this slide, is that um, I think even before the, the, the more recent downturn in the capital markets, you know, the, the, the space or the glut of very early stage um, AIM IPOs that we had from probably 2004 through to 2007, that's not going to come back. And um, you know, if you're thinking that as an exit route for you, yourself or your investors, you know, the criteria for IPOs has really gone up, you know, the, the sort of enterprise value you know, size. And really, you know, unless your business is at minimum 50, but probably close to 100 million pounds, you shouldn't really credibly be looking to float your business. And in the, in the public markets, investors you know, uh, who will back companies at IPO have to see you know, very visible profitability. Um, and to be honest, unproven technology is not, is not a valuable commodity at IPO. 
Um, so this has a real impact when you're looking at companies and thinking, well, how am I going to exit from this, this, uh, this investment in whatever, a three to five year time period? Um, and similarly on the trade sale side, um, trade sale activity obviously still continues. I think in the sustainable sector we do, we do lack um, uh, an ex a sort of a mid-cap sector of, of, of technology savvy businesses who would normally be the exit route for a young technology company. You know, this is not a software sector, it's not even the biotech sector where you know, pharma companies buy early stage technology companies. So you have to prove your technology on a much uh, larger scale, I think, uh, before a trade sale acquirer would be actually interested in, um, in, in making a strategic acquisition. Um, and I think, again, <coughs> trying to reiterate this, if you're an entrepreneur running a business, you must understand that when a VC looks at your, your business, this is the key thing that he, you know, he must be convinced of, otherwise you know, we won't do the deal. Um, and that sort of takes me on to this uh, next slide, which <coughs> I wanted to put up because I think um, there's, a, there's a, a number of caricatures about VCs that they're just sort of faceless people and sources of cash and I think if you try and understand a little bit about where, you, where the venture capitalist is coming from and understand the particular business dynamics that we operate in then you might have a better chance of understanding and getting, getting funding. Um, I mean, VCs themselves do have to fundraise, so you know we're not always sitting on the buy side. We have to sell and market ourselves as investment professionals to our own limited partners, and we're only managing other people's money on their behalf. So it's a good idea to look at uh, the the fund <laughs> portfolio that you're you're going to see or you're pitching to. Have a look at the companies that are in the portfolio. Uh, see if there's um, a, a company within that portfolio which is very similar to you. I mean, we don't look at companies in isolation. We need to look at it, how it fits within our portfolio. Um, is it synergistic? Is there an M&A opportunity? You know, have we got exposure to clean energy generation? You know, it's very very important. I think that you understand that. Um, it's not just about where you sit and where you want money, it's about how that plays into what we're doing, where we are in our fundraising cycle. Um, so I'll just move on to the, the next slide. Okay. 